In this video, I'm going to share with you how to start with action and engage people right from the beginning of a live remote teaching session. When you're teaching a live session online, there's an extra challenge you face, which is to engage people right away from the beginning of the session. People are often coming from doing something completely different. They might have had a long day, or they might just be dreading a three hour session that they don't know what to expect from. So here are some quick tips on launching a session in a lively way to engage people right from the start. The key thing I want to suggest is to start with action. Do something. Have people take an action, participate right from the beginning of the class. And let me show you some examples of what I mean. First, um, some qualities of a great opener for a, for a remote class should be something active, somewhere, something where people are doing something, not just watching. Um, it should be something that's really short. It should be something that's connected to other things that are happening in the class. Something ideally that you can do over again so that you don't have to create something uh, genius new approach every single time and so that people know kind of what to expect. Um, you might have a few that you vary and rotate among. It should be something easy for people to do so you don't have to spend 20 minutes explaining how it works. And it should be something that's fun. People look forward to it. People are like, oh, great. I can't wait for class. It's going to do something fun at the beginning. Um, and they're looking forward to it and it's enjoyable and it starts the class with a positive momentum to set the stage for everything else you're going to do that session. Here's an example of one I've liked to use. It's a pictogram game. I just put something up on the board. This is an example and people have 30 seconds um, in their Zoom room um, if we're on Zoom to um, kind of write down everything that comes to mind. So you can play along right now. Chances are, if you're like a lot of students, you'll say things like a nutshell, a brain, a sandwich, etc. So it's a quick warm-up game. It gets us thinking in visual ways, it gets us thinking outside of the box, and it just has a little fun. Um, it can also be something more substantive related to your class. So you can have people um, respond to a, a meaty or thick question. That's a question that's not a yes or no question. It's not something where you're just asking for a fact or regurgitation. It's something that requires some thinking, analysis. It might be their opinion. I'll give you a couple examples um, in a minute. You can ask them to share a six-word insight. So it could be an insight about uh, the news that week, about a topic that you're teaching, about why motion graphics are useful if you're teaching motion graphics, or um, why um, how science journalism is changing if you're teaching science journalism in six words. And the six words part makes it a little bit of a writing exercise, as well as a thinking exercise, as well as a kind of a game. You can also start with something more open-ended, one minute free write on a, on a topic of your choosing. Maybe it's related to the classroom se class session that you're leading. Maybe it's related to an upcoming assignment. Or maybe it's just related to something interesting that is in the news. Uh, you can also start with a quick poll. And I think there are three really um, types of polls. One is social, which means so just how they're feeling. How are you doing um, right now? It's, it's you know, middle of a pandemic. How, how is your week going? How's your day going? Um, or it could be something more fun, like, you know, what's a great Netflix show you've watched recently or a great book you read over the summer? Second category is topical, so that's something related to the news, your topic of, of focus in your class, uh, what motion graphics piece have you watched recently, or what um, business news story did you read that was surprising recently, or what uh, is a great reporter that you you know admire and why, anything related to the topic or subject matter you're teaching. Um, the third is an input poll, meaning um, asking people for their opinion about something you're thinking about doing. Um, you know, we're thinking about two different um, readings for next week. Is there a, one of these two topics that really interests you most? or we're inviting a guest speaker for the next class, um, these three people I'm thinking about inviting, um, which of them are of most interest to you, or something like that. So these are a couple examples of the kinds of questions you can start with if you want to start with an open-ended question. And people can do this in the Zoom room, um, in the Zoom chat. You can set up a separate Google Doc where people write things. Um, you can have people write these in their own Google Doc or just do it for themselves. Um, I like to have people see what everyone else is doing, so I like to use a tool like Slido which allows you to have everyone type in their answer, and then you can show everyone else's answers on screen, and you can do it anonymously, or you can have people's names attached. So this is an example where you'd show them a headline, or you'd read a headline, and uh, and then they would come up with alternative headlines. And to add an element, you can ask students to come up with their own headline to suggest. You can have a student bring students bring a headline to, to rewrite. You can ask them to sum something up. So in six words, sum up the week's biggest story, or in six words, sum up the reason why um, Trump did X, Y, or Z, or whatever it is that you want to do related to your topic or related to the news or, or anything else. Again, the six-word part makes it a, a writing exercise and a thinking exercise as well as a game. And then, um, you know, maybe there's a, an interview person that they're interviewing coming up um, or that, that's been in the news, and you can ask them to come up with a good question, a sharp question, an interesting question, a surprising question. 
Slido allows you to, as I said, show um, the results of a poll on screen. You can see a couple examples here. People can respond on their phones. They can have another tab on their um, computer open. It's really easy. You can use a free version, which allows you to have up to three questions in any session. Um, people just type in slido.com and then the event code. So it's super easy for people to participate in. Here's an example. I've asked uh, a, a one word poll, a word cloud poll, and this is a, a, an example of what it looks like. So it's a quick way to get people's responses and super easy to use. You can also use something like Socrative or Poll Everywhere or whatever other polling tool you like. Zoom has its polling tool. Um, it's limited obviously to just multiple choice questions, but you can still use that as well um, to keep things easy. So in a nutshell, these are some ways to make a great opener um, for, a, for a remote session that is active, that's quick, it's connected to other things you're doing, it's something you can do multiple times um, without having to reinvent the wheel each time you're preparing a class online. Um, it's something that's easy for you to do and easy for students to do, and it's fun for you and for students. So good luck with your next uh, opening for your next class, and uh, I hope this is useful.